Well, what's up, Internet Land? Uh, I posted a video a couple weeks back and I said I was going to make a video the next day. That was a bold faced lie. I didn't do that. Um, but here I am a couple weeks later, and here goes the video. But anywho, I just rode from Flagstaff down Lake Mary Road, uh, popped off on Forest Road 125, which goes out to Kanikanik Lake. Never been there, it's absolutely fucking gorgeous. Um, and then right at the turn off of where Forest Road 125 branches on to this other fucking road uh, that goes to Kanikanik, I don't know what it's called. Um, I decided to take a break here and chill out for a sec because I was just riding a, a little really fast on the forest roads and um, I felt like the engine should take a break for a second. Anywho, uh, today we're going to be talking about the setup of the RX4, um, where I've gotten it to, and how much fucking better it is now, uh, given the things that I've done to it. Um, so review a few things that are making an impact on my riding today. Uh, first of all, bar risers did those, those like two months ago or so. Such a big difference. Um, oh, those, the, look at, see, they're heading out to connect connect. They know what the fuck is up. Um, such a big difference with the bar risers. Uh, sit up a little bit higher, especially when I'm standing on the bike, which is almost always on forest roads because I like to go fast. And if I hit a big bump, I can take the shock where if I'm not standing up, I can't. Anywho, much, much better with that. Uh, the front shocks, they went from 10, uh, 5W fork oil to 10W, makes them stiffer. Now that they're stiffer, so much better on any of those big bumps on the road versus it just being a wham uh, of it, of it completely compressing my shock. It might compress it all the way and still hit, but it's much softer, uh, much slower. And I like that feel when I'm riding. The biggest upgrade that I've done recently is those uh, Shinko 804s and 805s on the tires. My God, what a goddamn difference better tires make on off-road riding. Uh, most of the time when I was on these forest roads, hitting a turn, like, like hitting this turn right here that we see out in front of us, I, I might have to go only like 10, 15 miles an hour because I would be afraid to slip out and, and slide crash. However, now I can probably hit that at, at 25 and still slide, but I'm catching. So in the middle of the slide, I can actually shift my weight on the bike and hold my hold my rear tire on the ground just because of those knobbies. On top of that, because of all this like cinders that we have out here in Northern Arizona, uh, when you're rolling over them, a lot of the times the rocks goes into the knobbies, hence the point of the fucking knobbies. Um, but they work extremely well. So I am absolutely loving those three things make off-road riding on this bike a hell of a lot better. Um, but that's not what you guys are here. I'm sure a lot of you have skipped over this section. You know, fuck you for doing that. Um, just kidding. I, I don't hate you. But for those of you still watching, kudos to you. I'll give props. Uh, that's not what you guys are here for. You're here to watch me ride this bike uh, with my helmet cam and to see how it does. So let's go take off down Kanikanik Road after having uh, some water. Uh, and a nice tobacco pipe smoke because I'm classy like that and I have tobacco pipes. Anywho, catch you guys in a second. Oh, one final thing I forgot to mention. Uh, last tune-up that I did, uh, which I get my tune-ups from Santa Cruz Motorsports and Flagstaff. Nate, you're awesome, man. Um, the last tune-up that I did, Nate saw that on the specs, they updated the RX-4 for the output valves, uh, the exhaust valves. They went from 0.6 millimeters to 0.8 millimeters. So increased how much gas could actually flow out of the valves um, on the downstroke. Uh, and ever since they did that, the thing's idling a good bit better. I also noticed just a slight, I mean, like a minuscule amount of more torque, like maybe a horsepower or two. It's not much, um, but I also did that to the bike, which has made it idle a lot better. That's something that's very noticeable. But the other thing is that it has a little bit more power. Um, I guess the only thing that I want to do now is uh, get a different sprocket. Because my God, a, a lot of you have been saying this, especially on the RX4 uh, or the CSC Facebook page. This thing needs to be geared lower. Like it's nice that I can cruise at 85 miles an hour at only like, 65 like 7,000 rpm but i would much rather 
put one tooth down on the front, two tooth more in the rear, sacrifice that, because I, I hardly ride uh, freeways or highways anyways. Most of the time I'm on freeways, uh, with the speed limit's like 65 anyways. But I would much rather sacrifice that to get that low end grunt, because my God, when you're climbing up like a, a steep hill, uh, you have no grunt whatsoever, and you gotta feather that clutch so much. Uh, I know it's hard to burn out the clutch, but still, I, I hate that feeling. I would rather have a little bit more of a tractor feeling from it uh, and get a get a lower gear ratio. But anywho, I wanted to add that. Enough of me me chatting. Let me let me finish this uh this water that I was talking about and have my smoke, and then we'll go out for a ride. All right. So this ride ended up taking me, I would say a good hour, hour and a half of forest roads. And clearly I didn't want to make an hour and a half of forest road riding. So I'm going to snip in some of the different terrain areas, some of the different parts, my favorite parts, my least favorite parts. I've kind of taken this Arizona backcountry discovery route from Lake Mary Road, uh, where it hits Connecticut Lake, um, all the way out basically to the 87. I believe it's the 87. Whatever. Whatever that road is. If it, if it get better at maps if you don't know what I'm talking about. But this this bike does really well. And hands down at the beginning of the day when I had more energy and when the terrain was particularly like this, I had the most fun. It was rocky in some sections. It had little rolls. It had nice little dips. Uh, things to think about. Had to choose your line right. Hands down the most fun. Now later in this video, there's this horrendous section that's mixed in with juniper uh, conifers like the ones you see around here but much more dense and the amount of, of baby heads that I saw out there was ridiculous choosing my line or choosing a good line was almost near impossible you just had to choose the easiest one I believe it's actually right after this cattle guard within within about a half mile that it gets real crummy so cattle guard in case you can't tell that's like a inch lift on the cattle guard so slow down getting out here but eventually the trail becomes or this road becomes quite quite crummy so here i'm starting to get a taste of it just just a small taste of how how horrible it's going to get and i'll say that if i was on you know something with eight plus inches of travel this bike would have done a lot better i probably could have gone a good five to ten miles an hour quicker or i would have felt comfortable hopping up over some of these things but on the RX-4 with just five inches of travel on the front and rear. It's just not enough to handle terrain like that. I mean, as soon as it gets smooth like this, you can have fun, you can throttle up, but then as soon as you see anything ahead of you where it gets a bit tricksy, you gotta slow down, you gotta look at your line, you gotta make sure you're not gonna bump into anything and, and screw it up. So, this is just the beginning of it getting kind of horrendous. Still having fun, still having a blast. Uh, I'm on a motorcycle. Who's not having a blast uh, when they're riding? So I was, I was still having a good time, but hot dang, did it get did it get a little tricksy up ahead? All right, so this is where it starts to get pretty gosh darn bad. You can see some of these boulders are sticking up like six, eight inches off the ground. There's loose gravel underneath you. It's just constantly battling the bike, or I should say, battling the terrain with the bike. I was standing up damn near the entire time, really looking 20 yards out or so, trying to find the right line and then just holding it underneath me. And uh, I wasn't babying the dang thing. I mean, I feel like a brand new rider on a, on a nice, like, 250 would have gone about the same speed that I did. An experienced rider, clearly on a 250 could have gone a lot quicker, but uh, eventually it flattens out like this. I have some more fun. I think I get a little bit of air, like, somewhere around here throttle up over something. Um, I forget. But whatever. I remember getting a little bit of air off of one of these little pop-ups and it was kind of fun. But still, I am yet to see the worst of the worst. Because right up ahead, it looks like it's going to be smooth. All of a sudden, these junipers get a little bit bigger. I think the trail's going to get nice and windy. And it does get windy. But then I come across areas like this where it's just chunky. Um, there's no better way to describe it. It's constant chunks, two inch ups, two inch downs. And uh, it's, it's, it's fun on this bike, uh, but could I do an entire 
four hours of riding on terrain like this, hell no. I would I would much rather choose not to. This is this is meant for either a lighter weight bike or I mean shit, going for the, 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 the 790 or the 690 from KTM when you actually have, you know, nine inches of travel, then you could actually have fun here. You don't have to worry about the bike bucking up underneath you. I think twice during this ride I got cocky and that back seat just bumped right up into my ass and you know threw me up a little bit. Not over the handlebars, but threw me up a little bit. Not not, not the funnest time in the world. But it just stays like this for almost a mile, two miles or so. Again, I'm fighting the terrain on the bike. Uh, it can do it. I'll let anybody else out there know that if, if you're looking for a cheaper bike that can do these sort of things, this bike can do it. It's just, if I had somebody here on a 250 or, you know, something with 10 inches of travel, they would be kicking my ass and looking back and waiting up for me every probably 5 or 10 minutes. But out here by myself or if I'm out here with a friend who's new at riding who has like a little 250, it's, it's going to be a freaking blast. Uh, it's doable. So... Yeah. Anywho, here's a little public service announcement. See these gates? Always close them. Please, 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 always freaking close them. It is not that hard to. Doesn't take that much extra of your time. But these are cattle guard gates for ranchers that are out there herding our cattle. So, if you want beef to be cheap, if you don't want a rancher to lose some cattle and thus increasing the prices of that cattle, uh, just close the gates. PSA. Do it. Thank you. I'm going to fetch as I kept going here, the terrain eventually got better as I was approaching like Long Lake uh, area. And so it, it just smoothed out because more boaters take the path. It's, it, it's not as back country, it's more front country. So I started having a little bit more fun as we got out of that, that those rocky juniper sections that were back there that are a lot like this right here. But uh, I was starting to overheat a good bit, so I was gonna take a break just right up ahead because it was getting a little bit hot. So, I mean, here, here's my break. All right, well, took a good rest. Dumped some water on myself to cool off. Yeah, it's only like 85 degrees, but I'm from Phoenix, but it's still hot. <clears throat> well, let's see how this, how this road treats me. That is, that is not what it looks like most of the time. It is most of the time very, very rocky, as you can see, like back there. Um, but it should be smooth sailing in about a mile, mile and a half or so. So I get to a couple of lakes up ahead that are frequented by boaters. So if you can get a boat in there, probably uh, smoother roads. But let's see how this goes. Um, I pack up everything here and, and get going. And I have score, of course, representing the opt outside. REI Co-op of Arizona at Arizona Dual Sport Riders because REI rocks and uh, Arizona Dual Sport Riders is a fun crew. By the way, whoever I just met, fucking rock on to you. Shout out to you. You're a badass. I'll post a picture of you here in a second. Um, but yeah, let's keep this going and see where the adventure takes us. So uh, cooled off good little bit. Checking to make sure I didn't leave anything. Making sure my GoPro's recording and off I go. <sighs> Let me tell you guys something. Doing the audio recording and the, the video editing after writing is is not fun. So you're welcome for doing this. You don't have to be thankful, but I need to feel like I, I am being thanked. So I'm gonna say you're welcome. Anywho, here we go. As you can see the, the road's starting to smooth out. It's it, it smooths out a good gosh darn bit. Eventually I hit almost like a, 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 a freeway of a dirt road as soon as I get to Long Lake and easy riding from there. And I mean, again, something that I will say is that if you're, if you're imagining yourself not taking it on any super backcountry routes like this and you just want to fly on some forest roads and go explore a bunch of different roads just like this one in front of us here, this is where this bike is glorified. It works great. It's cheap. If you put it down, it's really, really cheap to repair. Uh, I've yet to have any problems with it, and I'm almost 4,000 miles in. No real big tune-ups that I've had to do. Uh, it's an easy and fun bike, so I'm enjoying the hell out of this thing. 
Forest road riding is probably what I'm going to stick to on it. Maybe some some more backcountry routes. Uh, but again, I can't I can't take super rocky terrain for a long time. That's where I need to just go get myself a, a DR 400 or something that, that, that'll have more fun on. But anywho, as always, thank you guys for watching my videos, and I will catch y'all later.